Jai Swami Narayan. Let's read Panchala 7 of the Vachana Amrut. This passage is titled The Maya of a Magician. Maya refers to the material existence, but also has the connotation of an illusory existence because it would be illusory to find any sort of permanent reality in the temporary material existence. Let's dive right into it. About an hour and a half after sunrise on Fagun Vadi the 11th, Samvat 1877, or the 29th of March 1821, Shriji Maharaj was sitting on a large decorated cot that had been placed on a platform in Jhinabhai's Darbar in Panchala. He was wearing a warm red dugli and a white case. He had also tied a white feito around his head. In addition to this, he had covered himself with a thin white blanket. At that time, an assembly of Paramhansas, as well as an assembly of devotees from various places, had gathered before him. In the assembly, Sriji Maharaj had Nityanand Swami read a passage from the first canto of the Srimad Bhagavat. In the beginning, Nityanand Swami explained the verse, which goes as follows. And it is indeed the first verse of the first chapter of the first canto, the opening verse of the Srimad Bhagavat. <coughs> if you'll excuse my Sanskrit. Janma dhyasya yaton vayad itaratash charteshva bhiknyaha svarat tene brahma hridaya Adikavaye Muhyanti Yatsurya Tejovari Mridang Yatavini Mayo Yatra Trisargo Mursha Dhamna Svena Sada Nerasta Kuhakang Satyam Param Dhimahi Thank you. <laughs> Thereupon, Sriji Maharaj himself began to explain the meaning of one of the other parts of that verse, Yatra Trisargo Murshaha. One should realize that the entities evolved out of the three gunas, qualities of maya, material existence, namely the five bhuts, the elements, the indriyas, the senses, the andhakaran, the inner senses and their presiding devas, deities, are never present in God at any time, past, present, or future. Also, one should interpret the other part of that verse, Dhamna svena sada nerastaku hakam, as follows, God, in his own form, dham, which in this context means divine light, destroyed the deception in the form of the products of Maya, such as the supremely satya, real or truthful form of God. Moreover, just as the form of God in Akshardham is resplendent with countless divine powers and divine light at the end of Atyantik Pralai, a kind of dissolution at the end of a cycle in cosmology. One should realize exactly the same regarding the manifest God in human form. One who realizes this is said to have known God perfectly. However, when a foolish person looks at the manifest form of God with mayak, material vision, they perceive a human like themselves. Also, just as they themselves are born, become a child, become a youth, become old and dies, in the same way they believe God to undergo the same process. But when one worships God with sincerity, having faith in the words of the Ekantik Sant, that true or absolute saint of God, one's mayak vision disappears. Thereafter, one realizes that same form of God as being the supreme Chaitanya, awareness, 
characterized by eternal existence, consciousness, and bliss, Satchit Anandam. The Srimad Bhagavat also mentions, now in the 38th verse of the third chapter of the first canto, Saveda dhatuhuf padavim parasya duranta viryasya radhanga bhanehi yo mayaya santatayanu vrutya bhajeta tatpada saruja gandham which means they who having become free from maya, serves the holy feet of God while constantly observing his wishes, realizes, i.e. attains the state of God, i.e. the highest state of liberation, who holds a disc in his hand, who has infinite powers and is the transcendental supporter of the universe. The phases of childhood, youth, and old age apparent in God, as well as his birth and death, are all perceived due to his yogic powers of creating an illusion. In reality, God remains absolutely unchanged. For example, an adept magician arms themselves with weapons and ascends to the sky to fight against the warriors of the demons, the enemies of Indra. Then, having been cut to pieces, they fall to the ground. Thereafter, the magician's partner gathers those pieces together and burns themselves on their funeral pyre. After a short while, the magician appears out of the sky, armed with weapons, exactly as they have appeared before. When they ask the royal majesty for a reward and requests, please return my partner, Having such, seen such an astonishing performance, if one is unable to comprehend the maya of even a magician, how then can the yogic powers of God possibly be comprehended? One who does comprehend the maya of the magician realizes that magician has not died, nor have they been burnt. In reality, they are exactly the same as they were before. In a similar manner, one who is said to have realized the form of God perfectly understands God to be eternal and imperishable, absolutely unchanging. For example, when Sri Krishna Bhagwan left his body, Rukmini and the other wives of God took his body and burnt themselves along with him. At that time, the ignorant thought, now he is dead. On the other hand, those who possessed Jnan, knowing wisdom, thought, He has disappeared from here and has manifested elsewhere. They understood God as being eternal. Thus, Sri Krishna himself has said, Avajananti mamudha manushim tanum ashritam Bharam bhavam ajananto mama bhuta maheshvaram Which means, fools deride me as having a human form, but they do not realize my transcendental form as the great lord of all beings. Which I believe is a verse in the Bhagavad Gita. So if a fool understands God as having a form, then they understand him as being merely like a human, or they understand God as being formless so that he is not considered mayak, material, like other mayak forms. In this manner, a fool misunderstands on both accounts. But if God did not have a form, then what about the fact that the Shrutis have said that during Adyantik Pralai, Sa Aikshata, which is how the first verse of the first chapter of the first canto of the Aitareya Upanishad begins, meaning that God saw. If God saw, then he had to have a form possessing eyes, ears, and other organs. Moreover, 
It is said in the 26th verse of the 5th chapter of the 3rd canto of the Srimad Bhagavat, Purushenatma bhutena viryam adhatta viryavan i.e. that Purushottam became the form of Purush, the primordial person, and impregnated Maya. Therefore, God has always had a form. Moreover, when that Purushottam Narayan takes the form of Purush for some task, that Purush is eclipsed by the divine light of Purushottam, and only Purushottam remains. In the same way, when Purushottam takes the form of Maya, Maya is also eclipsed by the divine light of Purushottam, and only God remains in that form. Then God takes the form of Mahatattva, then the forms of others evolved from Mahatattva, then the forms of Varat, the entity evolved from those elements, then the form of Brahma, and others created from that Virat Purush, and then the form of Narad and the Sanakadik. In this manner, in whomever that Purushottam Bhagwan enters for the purpose of fulfilling many types of tasks, he eclipses that entity by his own divine light, and he himself reigns supreme through that entity. Moreover, in whomever he resides, he suppresses their own light and manifests his own divine light. Just as when fire enters iron, it suppresses the quality of coldness and the black color of the iron and exhibits its own quality. Also, when the sun rises, the light from all of the stars, the moon, etc., merges into its own light, and only the sun's light remains. In the same way, in whomever God enters, he overpowers their light and exhibits his own divine light to a greater degree. Then, after completing the task for which he had entered that entity, he separates from it. Thereafter, the other entity remains as they were before. Thus, the additional powers that that entity appeared to have should be known to actually be Purushottam Bhagwan's powers. In this way, the manifest form of Purushottam Narayan is the cause of all. He is forever divine and has a form. One should not perceive any type of imperfections in that form. It's like a murti, a divine image made of sakhar, which I believe is sugar. Furthermore, one should meditate on worship, meditate on worship and offer bhakti, loving devotion, only to the form that one has seen. Furthermore, whichever human traits seem apparent in that God should be understood to be like the maya, the material existence of a magician. One who has such an understanding does not develop any form of delusion for that God in any way. These facts can be understood by one with the following firm conviction. Even at the time of Atyantik Pralaya, God and his devotees remain in Akshardham, where the devotees enjoy divine bliss, having attained a divine and definite form. Moreover, the form of that God and the forms of the devotees of God possesses divine light that is equivalent to the light of countless suns and moons. Only one with such firm understanding is able to understand this fact. Also, it is to liberate the jivas, the souls, and to allow those jivas to offer the nine types of bhakti to him that that God, who has a luminous and divine form, becomes like a human out of compassion, always doing so with all of his strength, divine powers, and attendance. Even then, those who realize this esoteric truth understands the human form of God on this earth as being exactly the same as the form of God residing in Akshar Daham. They do not feel that there is even a slight difference between that form and this form. One who has known God in this way can be said to have known God perfectly. For them, 
Maya can be said to have been eradicated. One who realizes this is called a devotee with jnana and an ekantik bhakta, an absolute or true devotee. Moreover, if by chance a person possessing such form upasana, worship or reverence of the manifest form of God, never harboring any doubts of Maya being present in the form of God, were to behave unbecomingly due to the influence of bad company or due to the influence of their own prarabdha karmas. These are the karmas reaching fruition in this very lifetime. Even then, they would attain liberation. On the other hand, one who has doubts in realizing God in this way, even if they are stanch, Urdhvareta Brahmachari, a kind of celibate who restrains themselves from releasing any vital energies, and a great renunciant, attaining liberation would still be extremely difficult for them. If a person has, from the beginning, developed a firm conviction that God possesses a form even at the end of Atyantik Pralai, and if they were to listen to scriptures describing God as merely being full of light and formless, or if they were to hear such talks from someone, even then they would not harbor doubts. Why? Because they have realized that God eternally possesses a form and is never formless. Furthermore, that very God assumes the form of Ram, Krishna, etc. One with such firm understanding should be known to have perfect conviction. In this manner, for the purpose of enlightening his devotees, Shriji Maharaj talked about the unparalleled conviction of his own form. On hearing this, all of the Paramhansas and devotees strengthened their faith in Sriji Maharaj's form as described. Thank you for listening. This was the final passage in the Panchala section. Next time we'll be reading the second Gadhada section. Jai Swaminarayan.